What's up traders? This is Mish from the Pinnacus team and today I'll be showing you guys how to set up your trade of eight for optimal trading. Now when you first start, it usually looks something like this, quite messy, a lot going on. So first thing you want to do is just clean it up and the end result is going to be something like I have mine right here just to show you real quick. This is what my daily workspace looks like. It's simple as having a chart here and Dom. So I execute through both of these, just depending on what feels quicker in a moment. Then I have my orders tab. That way I can see like what's my working orders, what's filled and what's canceled and so on. And I just have my positions tab, nice and simple. And then I have my tabs here at the top, ES and NQ. That way I can just switch between them depending on what I want to trade. And same thing here, ES and Q. Can quickly switch between them all good to go so that's the end result we're trying to achieve here now back to this messy default setup so first i want to start by closing out this secondary chart i simply don't need it so i want to find the close button here at the top of the panel and uh same thing with this uh, i'm not even sure what this is but i'm just going to close that one out so now i'm left with the orders tab and the positions tab now you could separate these by dragging the positions just um, clicking and dragging it out like this or you can click plus here at the top and uh, you'll find positions right there as well as chart dom but you don't want to click on these because it'll just open a separate window what you want to do is click and drag so what I'm going to do is just that click and drag it out. Now it can do something like this and I can just place it anywhere I want. So I'm just going to stack them and that's what it's going to look like. So ideally I have my orders here and then my positions tab. Or like I said, I could have just dragged that out. So what that will look like is I'll close this and drag that out of there and I'll stack them once again. So now I have my orders tab and my positions tab. And uh, for your orders tab, just real quick, you want to go into the cog and show, click show filters. And now you have all orders, working orders, filled orders, cancel orders. What I do is I just keep it on the working orders. That way, if I forgot that I have any stop loss orders or any like pending orders still out there, I can see them right here and I can always cancel them because because um, an accident could happen where you just forgot that you have orders out there. You know, you go and take a break and you come back and you're in a position that was filled and now you're down and your whole account's gone. So that's why you always want to have this open uh, on the working tabs as well. That way, if there is an order, like if I, if I place an order right now, you'll see it there. And it is going to be a pending working order. So what you can do is always just go and uh, click cancel all. Now it's gone. Next thing is your positions tab. I just keep this one as it is. I just simply uh, have this to monitor how many contracts I'm in and so on. Then your DOM and this one here and this thing here is pretty much good. I'll just give it a little more room by dragging it to the right. And I'll click on the cog here and go into settings to add show estimated PL and click save. So, what this will do is when you're in a position, it will show you estimated PL by each tick. And it's just a good guide to know when you want to offer out or when you want to take profit, um, as well as you know, referencing it to the chart. But here you'll have the dollar amount per actual tick. So, just a nice little tool. And, um, and if you go back to the top and click the cog here, you can see you can add buttons. And uh, if you click here on this drop down, you'll see um, these buttons here. So like I said, if you're ever in a position or you have a pending order, you can click exit at market and close, or you can just cancel all orders and the and so on and so forth, right? But the interesting button here is reverse and close. However, I don't recommend using it, but I still want to explain what it is just so you know. So let's say if you're ever in a long position and you're writing the trend, but you're seeing that the trend is changing and you're thinking going short, 
what you can do is you can click reverse and close and it'll close out your long position and flip you into a short just with one button. Um, nice little tool, but like I said, I don't really recommend using it. Just let you know what it is so that you're aware. This next drop down here is for a quantity of your contracts. You can select here and you contract them out. And uh, I'll go, I'll get back to this sh just shortly after we set up the chart. So next I wanna clean up this whole messy chart. Um, I like mine to look as simple as possible. So I'll close this out down here. And then next thing I wanna get rid of is all of these studies. So I'm gonna click the cog and just delete, delete, delete all of them. And I also want to pick my time frame that I like to use, which is going to be the two minute. You don't see it here, but if you click on custom time, you can drop down to a two. And now we have the two minute chart intraday. Um, also can choose whatever chart type you want. I use the candlesticks. And then down here, you have your fills and orders. So this is an interesting one. If you have these ticked, uh, it will show all your orders on the charts as they're pending, as they are being submitted, and your fills as er are gonna be there as arrows, and then you'll also have um, show trade lines, and it will look something like, you'll have an arrow saying that you sold here, and an arrow saying uh, that you covered here, and then the line will just, you know, show the actual, um, transaction happening. It's useful when you're doing multiple contracts. That way, let's say if you, you know, you sold three here and you covered one here, then you covered another one down here and then maybe you like trailed out right here. From this initial short fill, you'll have all these lines. So I recommend on having all of these clicked. These can be very useful for your trade review or just, you know, referencing how you actually traded it on the chart. Then uh, over here is the market depth and day volume profile. I don't need any of them. So I'm gonna uncheck that. And now that I have a clean, simple chart, I can always go in here and choose the color scheme. And you can also click here and customize every little thing like the bars and their outlines. Basically everything is very much customizable right in here. I'm not gonna mess with that for now. And let me just go back to the dark, save that. All right, so for this next bar, you wanna make sure that you have these buttons uh, available on your chart. And to do that, you wanna go here at the top of that window and select trade mode. Because if you don't, you don't have these buttons, you can't click on the chart or trade through the chart, which is something that a lot of traders like to do. So like I said, click the cog here at the top of the window, select trade mode. And now you have these same buttons as you do on the DOM. And you can either execute through that or you can just click on the chart. So I could left click here on the chart and let's say I want to have a sit in order uh, above this area to buy and go long. I can do that or I could have a short sitting down here as a sell order and I can also do that. So I have those orders sitting there. Now it looks like our long order is going to get triggered here in a second, as you can see it as well. Here in the dom and it just got filled so what i could do is uh i could start placing a stop for that order via the dom here and our price for the stop would be somewhere around here around 550 so i could scroll down in the dom and i could uh right click on that area of the 550 and that will create a stop order it'll just be sitting there now what i could do with that order is i could always move it up or down and I could do the same thing here in the matrix or the DOM. And I could also right click that and select the contract amount of uh, how many contracts I want to sell or buy at any point. But given that this is a stop order for our one contract that we have right now, um, I'll just have it sitting there as one. So we have our stop in place. Now, what if we want to have a sit in order at the target? So I'll either look for an area on the chart. So like, for example, here, we could use that area as a target and I could just put a sell order there for our one contract. Or instead I could cancel that 
and put it in the DOM instead. So I'll scroll up to whatever this area is, somewhere around 80, and put the order out with a left click because it's a regular cell order. So the one thing I want you guys to take away from this is when you put orders through the DOM, the right click is going to be a stop order and a left click is going to be a regular limit order. Now, with all these orders sitting around, uh, if I wanted to just quickly get out of the position and close these orders, I could just click exit a market and close, that will cancel them all out. Or alternatively, let's say if our stop gets hit right now, what I wanna do is go in here and click cancel all. That way we just make sure we got all of our working orders closed. That way this pending order to go along here doesn't trigger while we're away from the desk or something. Because that is potentially what could happen and then you come back to your whole account gone. So you don't want that. Make sure to always clear out your orders. That is why I mentioned that having this working tab open is very Stop important. It. And like I said, our stop got filled. We are no longer in position, but we still have a sit in order to go along. And if I wasn't paying attention, I could have just walked away from the desk and this would get filled on its own while I'm away. And then I come back, my whole account is gone. Or maybe I'm up big, but that's not a situation you want to be in. So like I said, always go in here in the drop down and just click cancel all just to make sure there's no working orders. That's why I said always check back on this little tab here under working orders. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section. If you need a quick response, just DM me in the think tank. My name is Mish once again. And if you found this video valuable, give us a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.